hello. Sorry, I was having hello. difficulties. I was like, oh, no, it's not connecting. No, all good. Hi, Cassie. Hello. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. Um, we'll give, yay, we'll give people a couple minutes to jump in. Um, and then we'll go ahead and jump in. For sure. But I am excited. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? All right, let's see. Okay. Yes, Hello? I can hear you. And yes. Okay. Awesome. Oh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Is it all good? Yeah, I can okay, hear you. Okay, great. Awesome. awesome. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Let me pin um, something real quick. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Hi, America. Um, so we will begin shortly. I am Alexandra. I am YTI's program specialist. Um, I just pinned a comment. That is the link to um, the Google form for this event. Um, you can tell us how you enjoyed the event, what you, if you, and um, you will be entered into a raffle for a gift card to Nirvana Soul Coffee in downtown San Jose. Um, but that uh, form will just, yeah, <laughs> that form will um, help us, uh, our program and our events and how we um, continue to run these type of events um, because we do want your feedback. We always want to be improving and providing you with the best tools um, as possible. So uh, definitely fill that form out once you get a chance and um, we'll be getting started shortly. A little bit about YTI, Youth Technology Incubator is a free program in Santa Clara County for youth ages 12 through 20, 24. We are part of ACI organization, which is a wellness um, organization in the community. And we are part of uh, the youth program, one of two youth programs at ACI. And um, YTI will be having speaker series just like this one today, also workshops and events, um, all related to tech, media, and arts to help youth tell their stories and um, to help them be creative and be advocates for themselves and their communities. Um, this is one of um, our series that we have, which is our speaker series, and it is, um, I believe, we, our fifth speaker series that we've had. So we're very excited to have Tassi here today. <laughs> and thank you for joining. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Hoi. Okay. And will you just give me the go ahead? I just want to make sure that I get a few more people to um, log on. Yeah, it's good to see you again, America, as well. Thank you for joining us. No worries. Um, we just started, and we were just giving a rundown of our program, YTI. And the uh, comment that is pinned is from... Um, YTI, uh, our program lead, Hui, and that is a form for this event to fill out at the end. Um, tell us how we did, any additional comments, anyone else you would like to see, um, and you'll be entered into a raffle for a gift card to Nirvana Soul Coffee. And that is if you are a Santa Clara County resident, ages 12 to 24. All right, so we're just going to jump in and give people a chance to um, log on. Uh, Tossie sent me this wonderful video that we're going to share real quick, and then we'll jump into the questions. Are we supposed to be able to hear it? Um, is it not? Is the volume not here? Uh, I can't hear it, but I, I will. Oh, Hoi, may you let us know if you can hear that on your end? Are we supposed to be able to hear it? Hmm, yeah, no sound. 
Oh, I am sorry. There's no sound coming out. I am so sorry about that. That might be on Instagram Live's end. <laughs> Oh, I am so sorry about that. That must be an Instagram live thing. Um, but that was an amazing video introducing Tossie. <laughs> and that actually led me to one of our first questions. Um, because in the video, he talks about the fact that he loved science when he was younger. And um, so Tossie, uh, my first question for you was, um, what led you uh, into acting? What led you into theater? I know you said um, it took 25 years to find that passion. Um, so how did you eventually um, find this passion? Uh you know, the sort of the adage, thank you, by the way, for having me here as part of the series, first and foremost, uh, it's an honor and to see like who your previous guests were, like, I feel very honored to be a part of that uh, uh, group. And uh, I really commend you all for doing what you all are doing and making this accessible. Uh, certainly, it is something that I would have loved in my youth. I mean, I love it now in my adulthood, but like, as a <laughs> as a young person looking for a form of expression without necessarily knowing that that's what I was looking for, this would have been a very helpful guidepost for me. So I hope that uh, it continues to amplify and to grow. So if you're out there, definitely share the link of this one and uh, share their Instagram page. When we're talking about, yeah, of course, actually, <laughs> um, you know, the adage of uh, uh, from out of the ashes, you know, or, you know, out of chaos comes creation, that whole thing. Uh, I really sunk my teeth into performing arts after I had a really bad breakup in college. Mm. And at the time I was uh, attending school at SF State. And as an island boy living in Daly City, the fog and all of that just really, really crippled my sense of like, personal agency and who I was. And, and I wanted to kind of uh, run away from all of that, right? And I ended up in Hawaii, mm -hmm. staying with my brother. And it was there oh. that I was like, you know what, I have always had this uh, impulse to kind of just um, be on a stage, even though I myself, I count myself as kind of like a, um, a social introvert, in, in some respects. Mm. And uh, so I, uh, I threw myself into an acting class with, with no like end goal, except to, I want to try that because I've, I've done sciences, I, you know, business and why not try that? And I've always been mm -hmm. into like art, you know, I sketched a lot in high school and uh, read poetry, wrote poetry, not any good, but at least I knew <laughs> that I, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I had the I, I had the inclination then to think like, oh, I am searching for something, and that was mm -hmm. enough to kind of propel me in in a direction of like, let me try that. So a sense of curiosity. So yeah, day one of acting one hundred and one at Leeward Community College in Pearl City, and in Hawaii, oh. and uh, I was hooked. And, nice. and not, yeah, and, and not just like, a, oh, okay, cool, I'll come back tomorrow. No, it was like this revelatory moment where I was dead in my tracks in my mind going, this is it. This, mm -hmm. whatever this is, this room, this black box that I'm in right now, this is as uh, grand as like the Taj Mahal, for instance, you know, in my mind. <laughs> I'm like, this is, uh, yeah. this is I want to mold whatever this is. And so myself and like two other students, because you know how it is in community college, sometimes you take the classes just because you think they're fun or you'll get an easy A, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I totally dove in and like went and uh, sort of was like, what else can I do? Because I feel like I'm behind on the time, you know, college dropout. So there's always that like parental yeah. pressure of what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? I mean, what are you going to do? You know, that whole thing. And yeah. so, yeah. But that day, that day was so revelatory to me because all of that stuff was just, it was just like, it slid right off. And there mm. was, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people experience that. Or if they do, I, I don't think they quite identify it as, as that moment that will change their life. But that certainly was the catalyst for me. 
Awesome. And what was there? A, was it a specific um, scene or play that you worked on um, in that class, or uh, a character that like that brought you in um, and really like I guess cemented that that feeling of oh this is it? Was it anything specific, or was it just the class itself? I think at the risk of sounding uh, uh, too vague, it was literally. <laughs> It was literally walking into the nervousness of walking. I remember opening the side door, being mm -hmm. unfamiliar with one, this school, right? Because it's not usual for me. Two, this like hallway that looked sort of sterile, but there was this warm glow at the end of the hallway where the, the class was. And walking in, and the first thing I remember to this day is that smell of like seats and like fresh, <laughs> freshly painted black box, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that, that specific scent uh, was incredibly comforting and was so different than like, you know, walking into a economics class where it's like tile, linoleum, whatever. It was a very unique and distinct smell. And, you know, even to this day when I perform, well, used to perform on stages, uh, <laughs> there is a hint of that smell. So there's certain something to say about like perspiration, art and fresh paint. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so, it, you know, it's, it wasn't any one, it wasn't any one character. Like I said, it was day one. So it wasn't, it mm. was the demeanor of the instru uh, of a professor as well. I had professor Burdick, Betty Burdick. I still remember her name. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it was the, here, here's what it is. If I had to distill it outside of the smell, it was the passion in which she spoke of the curriculum. Mm. And I say that because... They're I, present. Yes, there was something, right? And I, I don't know it now. I, I didn't know it then, but I know now. It is that training of being able to speak dynamically, speak presently, and be completely enraptured by the topic no matter how many times you've like gone over it and i don't i think it was a complete like juxtapose that with my biology class that i was taking at sf state where mm -hmm. i didn't even have a professor i had a uh uh what do they call it like a professor's assistant teaching the class uh, okay. you know and that's yeah. so stark and you know i know it now that that was the kind of education that I was hungry for. Mm -hmm. And so that was the hook. Okay. Yeah, I feel like a lot of theater people um, have that moment with a professor or a teacher where, where they're like, this person brought me in. They helped like my love for this flourish. Um, yes. I feel like most people I meet have that teacher or professor, like they brought me into this theater, like this crazy theater world. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad you had that because I really think that's what it takes. It takes that person that has that passion and like that drive to like make everyone participate and have fun in the class and like, totally. Like, oh, this is, this could be like, this is fun. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned it was that community college in Hawaii. Uh, and that's what made you realize you wanted to pursue this. What were your next steps after you graduated from um, community college? So fun fact, I dropped out of that too. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I, like I said, I went in there as a, I don't know what they're called anymore. It's been a long time, but like I enrolled for just that class. I didn't enroll for like mm -hmm. an AA or a track. I, I was literally like, I have 200 bucks. I'm going to spend it on like these credits for this specific class. Um, because oh, okay. at the time I didn't know about like conservatories, like Foothill, mm -hmm. you know, or De Anza or something. Or I didn't know about um, private lessons, those things. My mind was yeah. still in, oh, I guess you go to school and that's where you get your education, right? And so uh, after that class, actually not even before it was done, I was so hungry for what was potentially there that myself and a couple other students, we started a monologue night at one of the local oh. jazz clubs downtown Hawaii. And it's still there, Jazz Minds is what it's called. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, and uh, the monologue thing, I don't know if it's still part of the program, but the location still exists. 
And the entire idea was we get hammered in, we, we were hammered in the class to do like monologues, right? We still do it today. You, you, I'm sure you've got like one or two in a back pocket. Uh, <laughs> and we started this thing where we asked the jazz lounge uh, proprietor, like, hey, after your musician set up and before you have a full open house, can we spend 45 minutes presenting monologues as like a warm up mm. to whoever was there? And they're like, sure, uh -huh. like, no, like, it, you know, it's free. You know, they didn't have to pay us. We didn't ask for, we just wanted a yeah. stage. And so that's what started that. And uh, it was there I met someone else, uh, Jean Francis, who got me an audition over for Lost. Uh, the TV oh. show, because that was about the, it was 2007, I think, yeah, or 2005, was about when Lost was happening. Mm. Uh, but fast forward, season two of Lost, I was invited to be, or was, I was cast to be an other, uh, which is a, the group of characters in the show. But, and here's how I got here to San Jose, in case that may be your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, question. I was like, what's going to be the transition? <laughs> yeah, the transition is that uh, I had a family member here in the Bay Area who uh, was going through a really challenging time. And my mm -hmm. parents were like, hey, this is a huge favor. Could you? <laughs> they say, could you? But honestly, I think it was like, please go. Could you yeah. please go and be available to your brother? And I mm. left overnight I, in 24 hours. I had packed all my stuff and I left. And uh, oh, wow. yeah, and then I've just been here since. So, you know, at the time I was t totally antagonistic towards it and uh, riotous, you know, because mm -hmm. I was going to be on Lost, you know, <laughs> that, that mindset of yeah. like, this is it. And, mm. you know, that, which is a topic for a different day, I think, the, the, <laughs> the scarcity mindset, right? <laughs> yeah but then so you came to san jose and the bay area has a really great theater scene um which yes, I, mean, I didn't realize when i was in high school and i'm like i've lived my whole life here and i didn't know that the bay area had a great theater scene um so what what was there a company that you first worked with that um got you into this theater world here specifically um or did you just start auditioning everywhere I got here and I acclimatized myself to the location and uh, was actually feeling really bummed about the, the prospect of losing all that stuff, but also it still had that fire. And so I just started auditioning okay. everywhere I could kind of figure out at the time where. Uh, so SF Casting was a resource because I was like, casting, you know, you type in San Francisco casting agency. That's what's going to pop up mm. primarily. So yeah. at the time, I went off of that. And in fact, I still have my spreadsheets of all my early <laughs> auditions, like 2011. Oh. Yeah, 2011. And so on my spreadsheet, it's labeled where, who, what happened? Did I get cat callbacks? Did I, get a, did I end up getting cast for it or not? Uh, so being able to look back at it now, I'm like, whoa, I was, uh, yeah, I was doing, I was putting, I was laying the groundwork for, my life career track you know endeavor but the yeah. theater the show that booked me first was tabard theater for mm -hmm. a play by uh, okay. Susan susanna greenwood wrote a play uh and i was cast as el chuya chaki i still remember uh <laughs> playing an amazonian rainforest <laughs> devil go figure and uh, after mm. that, I, I applied at San Jose Repertory Theater as a box office person and uh, ended up getting a job in box office. Eventually started working as the uh, assistant manager. I'm sort of fast tracking, right? Uh, and then <laughs> eventually started working for Red Ladder Theater Company, which is the outreach company that was within the theater company, which mm. San Jose Rep is no longer, but Red Ladder, still exist and I'm still actually a, I'm a senior member and we had a meeting today so you know oh it still it still oh, happens okay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. yeah yeah I definitely uh, wanted to ask about that amazing theater company um and the work that you all do there um because it sounds amazing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. red ladder 
Oh, did you want um, me to talk about real? Oh. But I did, yeah, well, before we get to Red Ladder, um, I did want to ask, because you had that transition to a completely, well, not completely new, because you did attend SF State for a bit, um, mm -hmm. but what would your advice be to young actors who do move to a new place and like immersing themselves into um, just one auditions and, and going about that, like, especially when you're so young, you know, you need a headshot, like you said, monologues. Um, how did you go about that? How did you go about finding a monologue that worked for you? Um, and also like your first headshot, you know, what was that like? Was it something simple? Was it, um, you know, shot by a friend? Because uh, I know we all have that as young actors. Like, oh my gosh, I need a headshot. How did right, you navigate right. that when you came to a new place? Um, the monologue thing was challenging because you, <laughs> you look at a lot of plays and it's very, like, white, you know, Anglo-centric. And so mm -hmm. no one ever prepares you for that. Like you're, you're a BIPOC artist. No one even, that's not, that, what is it, that wasn't even a word used then, right? BIPOC yeah. uh, or acronym. And so there was no navigation. So what I think it's a combination of like my personality that at that point in time where I was just like, I'm too hungry to, to hear the words no for me. Uh, and if I, if I hear it, it just means it's more nails and wood for me to create and build. So that, mm. that, you know, that mindset of, I've always really personally liked the idea of being an entrepreneur or a uh, self-starter. So that I say that because I think everyone's personality and entry is going to be so different and your access point is going to be different. Right. But when you think mm -hmm. about the, the actual actionable steps, regardless of who you are into a world of, of performing arts as a young artist. Uh, the best thing to do is lean into your community. If you don't have that, uh, you just have to self identify, try your best to identify what that actually means to you. It could be your friend, it can be a close relative, you know, with social media being so, uh, like permeates our life it's not that challenging to just put a post and be like hey i'd really like a monologue about this or find mm. groups that have that right so yeah. i i, I want to be able to to address that that the opportunities for that are in incredibly easy to find now versus i mean it hasn't even been that long to be honest with you like 10 15 years right <laughs> um and then as far as uh, what was the second part of your question? It was about um, monologues, uh, and then also just like going about headshots. Um, oh yeah! And, yeah. <laughs> so the so the first headshot, I I cannot remember how I met this person, uh, but they I think they were just shooting stuff in, in downtown San Jose, <laughs> and I was incredibly like I was on a lunch break, and I was like, hey, I work at a you know if you don't have any the best conversation starter is honesty, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and genuineness. So I was like, hey, I'm looking for a photographer. I'm a young artist. Uh, do you do, like, pictures of people's faces? <laughs> 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 and sure enough, they did. I and that. so, I, yeah, yeah. I still have them, and I use them for a short while. And then I there was a, there was a point where I became – wholly aware that there were working actors who didn't really have updated headshots and that I mm. was able to reallocate what could potentially have been money for headshots to something different. So fast forward, you know, when I could not find work as an actor, this is harkening back to what I said earlier, I made work for myself. So I wrote, I shot short films, uh, on, on, I don't remember what cameras I had, uh, HV30, I think it was, Canon HV30, yeah. And then, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've always really enjoyed movies. There was a short time mm -hmm. where I took a film class at De Anza, and I had a better understanding of what that takes and all that. And so I was like, well, you know, it's that mentality. If, if anyone can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Here, here's my advice to the young folks out there who, who may be tuning in later or are tuning in right now. 
it does not hurt to have a hint of delusion about your talents. <laughs> it hurts you more to feel like you cannot do it. Um, mm -hmm. rather than, you know, because the, the former will allow you to take those opportunities to shoot your shot. And, and you never know what comes out of that. As long as you're doing a great job, you're doing the best of your abilities can give you at that time, and you're being kind, and you are able to, uh, you are someone someone wants to work with, those, you are in a really good position for personal success. Um, and sustainability to mental sustainability. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say that's something that's like, I mean, just in general to have, but also really in theater too, is like, just be kind. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, make friendships. And like you said earlier, connect with the community because people are going to remember the people that were nice to them that, that yeah. in, you know, that brought a smile to the table. Um, so thank you for saying that, because that's so important, especially in theater. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, going back to the headshots. Yes, so the sorry. headshots, <laughs> I I, no, 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 that, no, 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 I, no, to, totally fine. Right. Uh, I just wanted to bring up the, the, again, the non-traditionalness because I've already done film and I was really honing my skills as a photographer. I actually ended up shooting mm -hmm. my own headshots the first time oh. and the oh. second time. So <laughs> the headshots that I have been using have all been ones I've taken personally. Uh, oh, which then they're segues great. In. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and now that's like my side business too. You know, uh, I do headshots okay. for fellow actors and stuff like that. And, um, I don't advertise fully because I don't, it's, I don't, it's, I'm in that weird gray zone of like, I do take it seriously. I do take that moment and that those sessions as professional as it can be. Um, mm -hmm. But I also know that I only really want to work with people that I've had some kind of like engagement with because I want to understand who you are before I can take your photos. Yeah. And, you know, I want to make sure that I, I, we've together uh, find that, that look, you know, that speaks to who you are and what you need it for. Um, so, so, yeah, that's the wrap up of my headshot. I took my own headshots. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no. for those who are wondering, is it worth paying X amount to get your headshots done? Two things uh, or a couple of things you have to remember do does your look change frequently mm -hmm. meaning are you are do you have the dna the genetics that you know for certain that you're going to change in the next four or five years or can you rely on the same look like i can i found out uh for you know the better part of five years so those those are things to think about the the second one that's a little bit more like um like business sense i guess is Am I paying just for the session or am I paying for the opportunity to connect and network with uh, the other clients that this photographer has or like this sort of pedigree of uh, look, you know? Um, and then the third thing is when you look at, you have to look at the, the photos that the photographer you're, you're vouching for has taken. Because mm -hmm. you have to think to yourself, do these look like accurate representation of the people that I know them to be? Mm. Um, yeah, and that'll save funny. you a lot of heartache <laughs> and money. <laughs> so, yeah. No, that's amazing that you took your own photos. And um, that definitely leads to just you as a content creator. And um, like you said earlier, too, like just kind of taking the reins on your own career and just going for it. Um, mm -hmm. So what eventually led to you creating your Twitch channel um, and just how you went about that with um, one technology, like your use of cameras um, and live streaming, um, you know, did you start off with a set of tools or a set of technology and software that um, you first began with? Or um, did you like slowly grow and add to your, uh, to I guess like your locker of things that you use when you do go live and when you do create content? Yeah, I remember it quite vividly. 
in different little like bite-sized memories, right? Uh, again, it started from having just that camera. And then eventually, mm -hmm. I think it always came back to, I don't have, I'm not in a show right now. Uh, I feel I need to do something that's just like on top of just auditioning. Because auditioning is the real, real work. So if you don't actually are out there working, auditioning, then you need to find some other way to like occupy and in your time. And in my case, I was leaning into video games as my escape because that my childhood entailed that. But I felt incredibly guilty for spending X amount of time playing a video game and not working on my craft. And I think that is a product at the time of like having poor discipline around the idea of acting. Because I, you know, I was like, I need a, an instructor to continue my work or, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I remember going on YouTube and looking up a video game because I uh, was having trouble in a particular section. And I was just listening along. I was like, what the, wait, I am watching another gamer explain this to me. This is like the same <laughs> as those, like, you know, those books that they used to write, the Nintendo Power Books, but, which as a kid I was enthralled with. You know, mm -hmm. so like, can I, it always starts with this. Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I have one rule for myself and is, and that is I, I do not, well, not, I have many rules, but one of them is when it comes to watching content is I'm not as harsh a critic as if, if I look at something and go, can I do that now right here in my bedroom? If the answer is no, then I'm like, cool, fly, you know, I'll whatever mistakes or i'll let it pass but so i watched these videos yeah and i was like i think i can do that all right how, where do i start you know and so <laughs> i just yeah i just um i invested in a microphone because early on i was like i want to do voiceover that mm -hmm. sounds fun so i got a microphone and then i found out it was fairly easy to record gameplay footage and overlay my my vocals on top of that and I was like, wait, people mm. make money from this? <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. And, and I don't know, you know, they, they, the recordings are often like 15 minutes per video, right? And in that 15, I found a sense of like, oh, I'm working on my voice. Oh, it requires some uh. of the things that I have done for my acting career. Oh, having mm -hmm. good posture, you know, Alexander technique and you know, all that <laughs> stuff came into play. And I yeah. think the co-mingling of that made it very uh, palpable to me of how like interesting content creating can be. And then from YouTube to then the, the deep sense of like, I need like instant gratification from an audience. I miss that fourth mm, wall yeah, the vibrate. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That vibration, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then at the time, Twitch was still young. Uh, and so it would show up on the searches as a live stream thing. And then I found out it didn't take that much more to go live. It just needed a good internet connection. So mm. that's how that started. Yeah, that was maybe like eight years ago now. Oh, wow. So you had it for, for a while. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I haven't always been for... active. Oh, okay. I, I haven't always been active. Yeah, because when I'm when I'm when I'm in a gig when, when I'm doing a show I often mm -hmm. find that I need that mental resource you know memorizing lines and like yeah. traveling to rehearsal and you know the a whole rigmarole of unwinding and that was like a huge energy drain so I, I do commend my longtime uh twitch supporters who know this about me for hanging out because mm -hmm. there are months where sometimes I would not even stream um, yeah, you kind of go to the theater hole and it's like, yeah. everything is about this show right now and that's what I'm going to worry about. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so. <laughs> so what would you say so far has been um, your biggest accomplishment, whether it be with acting or content creation or even just, you know, your life in general? Um, what has been um, the moment that you're most proud of? Oh, man. Uh, I think on a personal level, there was a moment where my parents have only ever seen me perform once um, and they, they haven't necessarily always been like champions of what I want to do in that regards. 
they weren't like they weren't like um ultimatumists you know they weren't like if you don't do that uh, they were just like are you sure that's what you're gonna do like, uh, you know are you what are you, are you gonna finish school blah blah um but they i don't remember what year it was but they came up here and i was doing a very small show uh at santa clara players yeah santa clara players oh. and you know if it was an audience of i would probably say 11 people <laughs> which is you know awesome 11 people came out on a, on a sunday afternoon yeah. cool and i i vividly remember being off to the side you know how like you in some theaters it is culture to sit out stand outside and greet everyone as they leave after the show mm-hmm. um so that was the case and my parents were of course the very last but my dad got to witness all like a handful of the the patrons who came to see that show like, oh, good job, young man. Good, good job. That was delightful. <laughs> Absolutely delightful. Uh, and my dad, you know, he just said, um, oh, I understand now. That's it. That's all he said. And, and then mm-hmm. he was like, what do you want to eat? <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> I've, oh, no, I've, sorry. I, no, no worries. No worries. I've taken that, like, memory and have made it, like, this pulsating gem in my in my mind as a, that's a milestone, you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I I make so many personal milestones because this career is nonlinear. And so mm-hmm. if you are not self-aware enough to create your own milestones, it's really easy to get swamped in all the negative stuff. It's really easy to find yourself comparing yourself to others. Uh, and it's really easy to just lose track of, of what actually you're passionate about. So that was that was one yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. And and hey, especially, you know, go ahead. Oh no, you sorry. <laughs> no, no, especially what? Oh no, I was just saying, especially you know, when we get so many no's, uh, I think that's a really important thing to impart on others, like creating your own milestones and keeping them in your mind um, when you do have those moments of, of getting a lot of no's, or um, you know, maybe you're not booking a lot of things, like, but I did this, this, and this, or I'm working on this right now. Um, so I really yeah. love that piece of advice. Yeah, the the yeses that you give yourself at the very start of the day, no one can take that away from you. Um, mm. You know, and it's it's it starts from should I should I sleep in today or should I go and like <laughs> do do some stuff? And yeah. no one is perfect enough to say, I'm going to get up every single day. It's totally fine to sleep in or whatever. But at, at, the, at, the, at the core of it, you have to say yes to yourself first because there are already tons of things and situations, circumstances, people that are going to say no to you anyway. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> and I would say, like, right now, I would say this very conversation that we're having is – scaffolding to something that I feel is very special that I identify as, oh, hey, I feel fortunate enough to be in a position where I'm, we're having this conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that at some point someone's going to watch this and, you know, I, I hope that it furthers their passion in whatever they're looking to pursue. No, definitely. And we'll, we're going to post it too. <laughs> hey. um, yes. Yeah, so it'll be saved and we'll tell people to continue watching it um, because you've definitely been saying a lot of amazing things. Um, but so going off of, uh, you know, your kind of your favorite moment or like accomplishment with, with the kind words that your dad said, um, what's been a moment of struggle or uh, something that like a barrier that was really difficult to overcome um, in your career and also you know, this might kind of be a loaded question, um, especially with the time we have left. But yeah, yeah, no uh, just with being an actor of color, like you mentioned earlier, too, like, have have you come across any barriers um, with that as well in the theater world? Um, yes, uh, that, that's yeah, that's a challenging one, because, I, again, it's one of those like. Uh, I'm I'm rebellious enough to go, whatever, I'll do something else that personality mm. rather than yeah. why won't they love me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, because I think, yeah, I do put a lot of stock in the personal tools. That's another thing. Like put stock in your, in yourself first and foremost. It's the same as saying mm-hmm. yes to yourself because 
I think it'll help combat that sense of like, what are they doing there? That FOMO, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, they mm-hmm. cast someone else for that. Oh, it could, you know, it happens all the time. Go celebrate this other yeah. people's successes first, you know? Um, Definitely. But when, when I'm thinking about like struggle, I, I would say, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Because I know I have, but I don't. It's it's almost like the struggle is the fuel, and so mm. the my mindset hasn't been like, oh man, I can't. Yeah, there that that even that sentence, I can't. I don't say it as much as I say I can. Yeah. That's just the ha- That's just a habit, right? I just make it mm-hmm. a habit. Do I believe it all the time? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but but it's the habit building of that. And so mm-hmm. uh, not to go like long-winded about what the struggle is because I'm having trouble identifying one single moment of that. I think there are like micro moments that have happened, you know, like mm. um, uh, 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 yeah, I can't think of one. Wow. It's, it's really <laughs> bizarre. Maybe I'm repressing it. I'm like, <laughs> no, but... <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Uh, no, there have no, been but struggles. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, yeah, there, there are struggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are struggles, but I don't ever find it as like a deterrent. And when I think about myself as a BIPOC actor, the first thing I often think about is, am I, like, did they get someone who can tell the story better? Mm. Right? And that, for me, allows me to, like, hone in on, oh, I'm lacking this that I need to work on. Uh, so, mm. so what I'm trying to say, you know, it sounds a little, like, a lot of words, but if you can if you can distill the reason why you're not booking or you're not achieving some of your personal goals, it is a matter of breaking it down enough, which takes a lot of vulnerability to address some of these things about yourself, to be able to find the verbs or the actionable moments within those so that you can do something different and elevate yourself. Because there is something to be said, like, if you do good work often enough and you're putting yourself out there, I know it sounds very scary for a lot of people, and it is, um, but you just have to trust that process. If you do that enough, there will be people who will help champion, champion you, who will help vouch for you. Because they, and oftentimes, a lot of people see potential in others before they see it in themselves. So that's just the reality of how we are at the moment. You know, I I hope that changes. I hope there's more like buoyancy in how people uh, see themselves and their Mm -hmm. potential. But if you even have one person who sees the potential in you, that's like roll with that. You know what I mean? Those struggles become shared and they, uh, you get so much further, farther, further, (laughs) far. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and the people um like you mentioned earlier like that you connect with they become resources as well so it's mm-hmm. like okay well how can like we help each other um continue to grow in this field um and then uh, i did want to ask about the sadly the video that didn't play the sound no, for is. some reason <laughs> but um the lay weimer is that how you say it lay uh weimer's <laughs> Lay Weimer. Um, yeah. yeah. How did that come about um, just in our last, you know, uh, sure. minutes here? Like, how did that uh, uh, experience come about? And um, yeah, because one, that video is really amazing. And was that an application process or was it something um, where they noticed you? There, uh, there are a lot of amazing grants in the South Bay, Silicon Valley that are arts oriented. And the, the folks who are in charge of it really do a really great job spreading it. But as you know, either the algorithm will work behind them. People don't check emails anymore. There's so many factors why that doesn't get to artists, you know. And so Mm -hmm. um, the Lee Weimers came about because the year before, I was actually a recipient of the Silicon Valley uh, Emerging Artist Laureate, right? Mm -hmm. And that took four years of applying 
to land Whoa. and that was a little bit more yeah so this is entirely different uh you could spend i could spend another hour talking about this for real <laughs> yeah but yeah. that process was uh everything that we've talked about here combined it was such an awesome experience to hear rejection <laughs> in that like, way come back yeah, I was so hungry. I'm still so hungry for it, right? Um, it's the it's the 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 cash the cash value was nice. Like, whoa, whoa, it's really nice. Uh, <laughs> but I think it was like the accolade. It, I needed to prove something to myself that that this is in fact all the things I do on a daily basis. We barely see, right? It's like working out. One day you wake up and you're like, <laughs> damn, I am ripped, you know. But you don't necessarily see that necessarily in acting. Sometimes you tackle a role and it's so hard. You, you mm. cannot wrap your mind around it. But the, the, the Emerging Artist Grants, it took me four years to land the Silicon Valley Creates Emerging Artist Laureate. What does that mean? Every year I had to write a new artist statement. I had to reassess yeah. my work. I had to reassess like what Ooh. I am about. Yeah. Uh, and then three of the years you get like, well, I don't know if they still do it, but they gave me feedback mm -hmm. and I got to see who won the awards all those other years. And I'm like, yep. Again, like I was saying earlier, hell yeah, you deserve that. Like, of course, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I was, I, I really did my best not to feel like, man, you should have picked me. I, me, me, me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's which is too easy to do mm -hmm. or even easier is say, nah, I'm not going to apply this year or I, nah, they're never ever going to pick me too easy. Right. That's the easy way out. Yeah. So when I, when I was the recipient of this SV Creates, there was another one that I was trying for, the Lee Weimers, because they kind of go in cycles. So oh, really, okay. I was just looking at Facebook, and I do, you know, I've, I, <laughs> I don't know if you know him, David Morales, active poet. He's performed yes. at uh, City Lights, right? And you were in the Wolves. Uh, <laughs> David, one year for the Lee Weimers, he did not know about it. We got home from work, from Red Ladder work, got to the house, and I was like, bro, it's due today. Apply for it right now. I will help you. I was also oh, applying gosh. for it. That's, this is my second year applying for it, uh, and it was his first year applying for it, and he had a great portfolio. He, he, he knew what he was about at that moment. He got that that year. And he applied the, the, the day it was due. Oh he wasn't going to do it. Hilarious. I was like, no, I'm going to sit here with you. We got three hours. I will help you. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it's not even a super duper extensive like application the way that SV uh, creates is. The following mm -hmm. year, I applied again uh, and I ended up getting it. And then this and current that was your year. Yeah, that was my year. And then this previous year, I helped Amy Dabalos. Uh, Amy D. I'm not She's a jazz musician, um, but she's also like performed okay. at City Lights and uh, different parts of South Bay and Yoshi's at Oakland. But she's a fairly well-established musician. And even she was like struggling with that. Uh, is this right? You know, so again, champion others and you will be championed yourself kind of thing, you know, and, and I firmly believe in that. So, so that's how the Lee Weimers came about. Not to, okay. yeah. now that we're no, but here. I definitely Ooh. wanted to hear about the Silicon Valley one as well because, um, yeah, not a lot of like there, like you said, there are so many great programs um, and like grants mm -hmm. that exist in this area, and it's like how do you go about finding those um, because they are really great opportunities and like you know also too in this industry sometimes having those things on your resume or even seeing them makes people stop for a moment and like look yeah. and then they can see deeper and be like okay what is this person about um but sometimes those like titles can be important um but did you find those by like looking online or did you find those through word of mouth uh the silicon valley creative uh the emerging artist i learned about through karen who's my mentor and supervisor at red ladder theater company Back when we were still working at San Jose Rep, she was like, hey, you know, uh, Arlene uh, Biala uh, and Ron Muyera, who are like, uh, Arlene is the, the poet laureate of San Jose, or was at one point, um, oh, okay. and works a lot with like arts grants here. And um, she, you know, through, through kind of that pipeline, I think it was also, there were, I don't think I shied away from, from asking in certain ways, like, 
Hey, Karen, um, I'm, I'm really not like, I'm, what do actors do? You know, just <laughs> those kind of things and not being, yeah. don't be, a sh don't be shy to ask stupid questions. Cause they, I guarantee you they're <laughs> not, they are not stupid. I only say stupid. They, they are, uh, uh, an opportunity for your potential to be illuminated. Think of those questions that way, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. and so, yeah, Karen's, Karen saw that in me and uh sort of guided me in that direction and then it was really just up to me to to apply every year and make sure that i mm -hmm. collect my uh, uh work samples properly so that that's another thing for for you out there who are young uh do not ever discount any of your projects archive them label them properly and put them in a safe place and make sure you brush them off once in a while to one remind yourself how far you've come because you'll be surprised uh, two, know that at any given time, those are like, like the titles that you were talking about, Alexandra, those are mm -hmm. things that you can show others when they need that data. Because as a performing artist, I think we all too often go, oh, you're an actor? Oh, uh, have I seen you in anything? That's one. The second question you'll yeah. get asked is, Do you, can, you, can you perform something right now? Oh, I know. <laughs> So you'll get that, that a lot. Worst. Yeah. So you're yeah. like, no, I don't, but I do have photos I can send you. So mm. use that. That is the tool. So yeah, also it's like a good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh no, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt your. <laughs> no, no. All good. Yeah, that's a uh, of just having your photos on hand because. Um, I mean, that's something like I even need to be more, more organized about. So thank you for that. Because, for sure. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, no, the photos are everywhere. And um, it is important to have them like in one place and mm -hmm. um, organized. Um, in our last you know, few minutes, um, are there any um, imparting notes? Because definitely we'll be sharing this and um, want to share this out to those that are in theater or just young people who like to create uh, content in general. Um, yeah. Any lasting notes? that you want to give to them? Yeah, um, <laughs> I got the five minute word. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is okay, it is totally okay to feel like you're burnt out of your passion. Um, it's totally okay to take a different path even if it means uh, it is not at all what you work towards, you know? Um, that is not the same as quitting. It is reassessing what your needs are and what you will find enjoyment with because life is too short to be stuck in something that you feel, um, one, doesn't fulfill you as a person, but two, doesn't bring joy to the people around you. Because um, mm -hmm. if we're all looking to like kind of live in harmony in some way, like I don't think, I'd rather work with someone who's still learning the craft, but is incredibly buoyant and um, uh, uh, joyful to be around than someone who has tons of experience, but is a total curmudgeon on, you know, and, yeah. and I, I don't think I'm the only one who feels that way. I, I can't be the only one that feels that way. So do, if you're starting in, in the theater arts, or maybe you're just coming in from a different vocation and you're, you're, you're unsure, you know, you're going to, this theater and performing arts is a collaborative art. It is a team sport, as they say. So uh, the more, the more, right? It is. It really is. Um, and in some plays, like the one you were in, it literally is a team sport. Um, yeah. So treat it like that, you know, meaning take care of yourself. If you need to step away from, from, uh, doing plays or if you know if you're a busy young actor uh take take some time away you know the more that you live your life the more that you can color the uh, characters and the art that you make in general so don't you know try not to feel like you're <laughs> like you need to always be in it because mm. you know um gets you know it's the same with like working out you cannot work out seven days a week straight yeah. and expect some kind of result. You need to let your body rest. And art is the same way. 
What you can do, though, what you can do is work on all the things that you have control with, by with because once that creativity happens, all of the stuff that you've set in place for yourself, your, your coping mechanisms, the way you unwind, how you memorize, that, those things will then guide that process uh, to execution, to fruition, to success, to fulfillment, rather than uh, holding you back. So. Awesome. Well, thank you for your beautiful last words. Um, we'll definitely try to like <laughs> flip that out specifically because those were oh, awesome. Oh, for sure. Um, and, <laughs> and thank you for joining us, Topsy. Um, really, it's been me. such a joy. Uh, all of our email contact, this conversation um, has been such a joy. And hopefully we can have you back for some other type of like theater workshop or um, something because we really enjoyed um, everything that you've had to say. Uh, and just thank you for being here with us. Yay, um, thank you for, for having everyone me that's again. Still, yeah, and for everyone that's still watching, um, be sure to fill out the form for a chance to win a Nirvana Soul gift card. Um, and just tell us uh, how you enjoyed this and maybe who else you would like to see in other speaker series. Um, but thanks again, Tossi, so, so, so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Have a wonderful time. Good evening, good night, <laughs> all that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.